Hello there, welcome. I'm Mark Thomas, the Minister of Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Blackwood. Thanks so much for joining me again as we spend uh, a moment each day during Lent to read a Bible verse together and to pause and ponder and pray. It's just a short time, but it's good to be able to get together and to know that there are many others that are joining in this small act of worship during Lent. So today is uh, the 35th day in Lent, which actually means we're in the final week uh, leading up to Easter. This is called Holy Week. It's Monday the 29th of March. Thanks so much for joining me as we have a Bible verse from the great book of 1 Corinthians. But first we light a candle. I've gone for a big candle at the beginning of this week. So do join me in lighting your candle if you do that uh, with me. And let's see this uh, flame come alive. There we go. So with our candle lit, we turn to the Bible verse today. Two verses, but really short, but punchy, full of power. Verses uh, 56 and 57 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And they, they say this. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I bet some of you have heard those words before, maybe read them in the Bible many times, maybe heard them on special occasions. What do we make of them today, just for a moment or two? Let me ask you a little question. Have you ever seen a phoenix rise from the ashes? I know you haven't, of course you haven't, but there's a sense in which this verse would want us to have this type of picture in mind. Let's think about Easter for a moment. Easter Sunday. The first Easter Sunday was a day of victory and the beginning of an eternity of victory. For us, that victory is still partial. Jesus rose at the beginning of a new era, but the old era still continues until Christ comes again, reappears, presents himself unhindered again. So, st sin can still influence us. Satan can still accuse us. Guilt can still assault us. Fear can still trouble us. But it's also true that Jesus has dealt with our sin, defeated our enemy, cleanses our guilt, and dispels our fears. So for now, we live with this tension feeling our mortality, but knowing that immortality awaits. Battling temptation, but knowing that victory is assured. Some days we feel the struggle more keenly than others, don't we? But even on those days when we are struggling, we can look up and see the resurrected Jesus, the promise of our coming victory. For one day, Jesus will reappear, return, come again, and his victory in our lives will be complete. So today we're going to use the words of a 17th century pastor called Thomas Adams, and he writes about Easter Sunday, which I know is a few days away for us, but let's just enjoy this moment at the beginning of this final week of Lent. It expresses confidence in the victory of the resurrection of Jesus and points us towards the consummation and fulfilment of that victory when he comes again. So let's pause to pray. Eternal Father, we praise you for this day and we praise you for Easter Day. Easter Day is our pass over from everlasting death to life, our true jubilee. Easter Day is our phoenix rising from the ashes, our eagle renewing his feathers. The first begotten of the dead is born from the womb of the earth. His death justified us. His resurrection justified his death. His resurrection was the first stone of the foundation and the last stone on the roof. Satan danced on Jesus' grave with joy, thinking he had Jesus entombed forever. But Jesus rose again and trampled on the devil's throne in triumph. 
as you spoke to the fish and it cast up Jonah. So you commanded the earth and it delivered up Jesus. Eternal Father, we praise you. For Christ leads us to you unhindered through the grave. Just as Moses led the people to Canaan through the wilderness. Christ's resurrection is not only the object of our faith, but the example of our hope. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for us, gifting us eternal life. We all carry mortality about us. And the strongest man is just like Nebuchadnezzar's image. Though his head be of gold, his feet were of clay. Did death kill the Lord Jesus Christ? Indeed not. Christ shall therefore kill death. On this, this day of celebration, when we anticipate Easter Day, when Christ rose from the depths of the earth, we expect one day to rise into the clouds of glory, to have our bodies raised, to have his promises fulfilled, to have our faith completed, to have his glory perfected, and to draw us to himself unhindered. There shall be dry ground instead of a valley of tears, and a land of the living instead of a Golgotha of the dead, a settled mansion instead of this impermanent tent. Christ had on Easter day by himself brought glory to you, gracious Father. Would you bring glory to your Son as we celebrate his resurrection from the dead? Eternal Father, we praise you that on that day there shall be no terror to frighten us, no sorrow to afflict us, no sickness to disturb us and no death to dissolve us. On this day we praise you for Easter Day and anticipate its coming with delight for the victory that comes to us through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me as we've uh, paused and read scripture and prayed together. Well, look forward to seeing you again tomorrow as we follow through this Holy Week towards that Easter day. Till the meantime, take care and God bless. Bye.